All right, everybody, we will uh, we will come back into our hearing on item 10.3. Um, we've uh, concluded the question portion of the public hearing, uh, and we'll now move into public comment. Um, before we begin on public comment um, in the room, uh, Mackenzie, uh, do we receive any written correspondence? Um, and will you read off uh, the names and folks that we've uh, received correspondence from if we did? Yes, we did. We received public comment from student investors, Cheryl Bradley, Marissa Burns, Courtney Flora from Apollo Hill Theory, Eric Hummer Bay from Squaxin Island Tribe, Lisa Klein on, on behalf of Jack, Jack Johnson, Johnson and Steve Johnson, Johnson the, owners the owners of Riverville, Riverville Properties and Clifton Heights Properties, Brad Carey, Jack Johnson, Michael Siptroff, Diane Hartley, Marilyn Corrigan, Judy Scott, and Brenda and Dean Hershey. And then I do have an email from Brad Carey that he requested to be read into record. Um, okay, so all of, the, all of the items that you received are gonna be recorded into the record? Yes, I do have those available online, um, but it looks like Brad requested to be read. And is that the only one that was requested to be read out of that pack? That's correct. Okay. Um, Commissioner, is there any objection to having that read into the record? Okay. Um, Mackenzie, go ahead. Um, Brad writes, again, I have reviewed the proposed EIS yeah, yeah. in support of its approval as it works hand in hand with steering and managing the increased growth in North Mason and has been and con continues to experience. I believe in the GMA and its effort to reduce urban sprawl. The proposed EIS places, manages, and provides infrastructure growth exactly where others and I would like to see it occur. It is important to recognize our county has planned for growth in this area for many years, and it is extremely critical to approve of both the EIS and welfare sewer extension sooner than later, because the longer we drag this already vetted process out, the greater risk we have of losing the opportunity to manage the growth with affordable infrastructure because landowners will not wait to develop their property. Once they start developing their property, the opportunity to place the infrastructure utilities will become cost prohibitive and managing growth as described in the proposed EIS will become impossible. Next, last Friday when we spoke for about 30 seconds, you explained to me that you were in favor of the growth in the north end of the county, but that you wanted the utilities like the sewer extension to be placed along the state proposed freight corridor, right? I see several problems with that plan. Number one, growth has been and is happening right now and the value in acting now in order to steer growth, reduce costs and provide relief to current sewer ratepayers more than offsets trying to run the utilities three to four years from now down a proposed freight corridor. What if the state decides to change delay or not even build the corridor, then what? Next, you also refuted my statement that the proposed welfare sewer extension and other utilities running north through Overton's property would not only manage residential growth, but also manage commercial growth and generate sales tax revenue for the county. Here's my question for you to answer during today's EIS hearing. Is our proposed EIS filing limited to just residential dwellings or is the land zoned also for commercial activity that would attract businesses that would collect and pay sales tax revenue to the county. I already know the answer, but I need you to publicly state what you told me Friday or make it clear that commercial zoning is also included in our EIS and our GMA slash UGA plan. Um, it looks like that's the end of that one. Okay, thank you, Mackenzie. Um, again, just uh, we'll move into comment from folks that are on the Zoom meeting now. Uh, again, best way to get my attention is to use the raise hand feature. Um, for our public comment period, uh, we were a little uh, liberal on the, uh, the time constraints with the question and answer period. Um, but in order to make sure that everybody that wants to make a comment can make a comment, we will adhere to our public comment policy uh, time limits, which is uh, roughly about three minutes per person. Uh, and again, as I always say, I don't have a stopwatch, uh, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna trust you to uh, try to keep your comments concise and on topic uh, in the three minute period. Uh, if if it's running uh, beyond that, I will uh, guide you to uh, to wrap your comments up. 
uh, and then we'll get through as many folks as want to make comment today. Uh, so here's the order of folks that I have so far. Uh, first, we'll have Lisa Renfro, followed by Kim Wilson, Lisa Klein, and Brenda Hershey. Lisa, go ahead with your comments. And if you want to unmute Lisa. There. Can you hear me? Right. We can. Go ahead Thank with your comment. Commissioners. Um, there was a question about revenue and um, for these um, projects. So when I was talking on the phone to um, not Marty, the other guy, <laughs> sorry, I'm a little nervous talking, but uh, and they were talking about excise tax and everybody is paying excise tax for the projects as the whole community. Um, and that's how it's being paid now, to my understanding. Um, I recalled the, the Senate Bill 5096, and I'm thinking, oh, that was for excise tax. And then I looked into the bill, and then it, unfortunately, they changed it, um, that it wasn't going to be for excise tax. So I thought maybe you guys could have utilized that for revenue. Um, but unfortunately, it's an income tax of some type that's going to fund the schools for education, for education. But then I was reading more about that, and it said that 20%, their, their the enrollment is down 20%. So my comment is if people in legislation, is just an idea that I had, could present something to Ensley about, well, what about the revenue they're not using or they're not going to use because if they could use it and convert it or put it back to excise and then it could be allocated for not just one thing, but to help with protecting our environment because that's, you know, he's all about global warming, right? So if this is put on the county that we have to do this or we're not gonna be able to allow people to build or get grants, well then, you know, so we're under their rules. So are they going to help us and how? And that was my suggestion. All right, thank you, Lisa. I appreciate your comments. Uh, next I have uh, Kim Wilson, Lisa Klein, Brenda Hershey, and then uh, Linda, another Linda again. Go ahead with your comments, Kim. Sure. Um, I just wanted to comment about the roundabout that um, I think Andrew Larson had mentioned proposed for Clifton and Highway 3. And I would highly recommend that somebody from DOT actually put boots in the ground, on the ground via a vehicle coming from Bremerton, arriving in Belfair at approximately four o'clock on a Friday afternoon. That traffic light at that intersection um, does not interfere with the flow of the traffic in my opinion. If you look ahead, you'll see that, and it's not the driveways that Loretta said, it's the off streets. It's the, the um, cur courtesy of the drivers that stop and let everybody in onto uh, the highway, which backs everybody up. You've got the elementary school that is releasing at, at four o'clock in the afternoon. And the highway is backed up from 106 all the way back up. And it, it's not that traffic light that is backing up the traffic. It is, it is everything beyond it. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there and recommend that they actually um, don't do a traffic count. They actually experience what we all experience in Belfair. Um, and I did wanna also comment about um, the county being more transparent with the constituents and their public notices. I agree with several of the other people that have made comments about those of us in the north end of the county not getting the, the notices and finding out about this, it seems like the 11th hour to get our input. So that's all I have. Thank you. Great, thank you, Kim. Uh, Lisa Klein, Brenda Hershey, and then Linda. Good almost afternoon, everybody. Thank you for your time. Um, my name is Lisa Klein. I'm a land planner with AHBL, and I'm speaking today on behalf of Jack Johnson and Steve Johnson, who own two significant uh, assemblages of property in the Belfair UGA. And we did submit comments uh, that are there for the record as well. Um, 
But essentially what we want you to hear is that um, last fall when the um, hybrid, alternative three hybrid was published as the preferred alternative, we provided comment to request that alternative three be uh, approved. And the difference being between the two was that the River Hill properties specifically were shown as in the alternative three medium density residential and in the hybrid as it is today, single family residential. Um, and there's some very good reasons for it to be uh, up zone to the R5 medium density residential. Um, we presented that to the PAC and it felt like it just kind of went very quickly without um, real consideration of those reasons. And so if you would please give it that consideration. And some of the things to note is that um, with the uh, location of the property and the cost of extension of utilities to the property, it really needs to have a higher density in order to be able to afford those extensions. Um, also, one of the reasons for the property being um, proposed under the hybrid as, as R4 that was given at the hearing was that um, there's a greater potential environmental benefit to be R4 because it's in the wellhead protection area. And I would argue that the opposite is actually true um, because we would need to have public utilities uh, extended to the property and to be able to afford to do that, you need the higher density. Um, and that's how you get your wellhead protection is through the public utility extension. Lastly, one of the key goals uh, that we read at, at the onset of this project was for, um, is for reviewing uh, transitions in zoning, transitions between zoning. And if you look at um, the uh, hybrid zoning, you've got on the east, or so, excuse me, on the west side, single family residential, then you've got a block of medium density residential, then you get the River Hill properties, which are now back down to single family residential, lower density, but it's right next to business industrial. So that's not a real, that's not a real transition uh, that's happening there. So um, we're requesting that the county commissioners please consider uh, the River Hill properties for the medium density residential zoning. Thank you for your time. Great, thanks, uh, Lisa. Next, we have Brenda Hershey, then Linda, Judy Scott, Marilyn Corrigan, David Overton, and Jeff Carey. Uh, Brush, uh, Brenda, go ahead. Uh, uh, I'll be real quick. I'm just asking that um, you take a pause here, uh, hold a public hearing. I think public participation is essential, and that you know we have the maps laid out so that just as it's very difficult to to understand what changes are coming without being able to point to and ask about. So I'm just I'm just encouraging you to do that. You know, I know, uh, Commissioner Shooty, you said that it's been two years, but it's been really two years that have been so strange with um, this pandemic. So I just ask your um, uh, adding a bit of uh, pause here and just give folks time to absorb this. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Next up, we have Linda, followed by Judy Scott, Marilyn Corrigan, David Overton, and Jeff Carey. Linda, go ahead with your comments. Uh, yes, thank you. I just wanted to um, reiterate a couple of things that have come up just uh, about the traffic flow. It feels to me like it's very, when, um, we start these housing developments, they can go up really quickly, but then dealing with the traffic conditions and, and things that we're dealing with now uh, take a lot longer. So I agree with Brenda when she says boots on the ground and people trying to maybe put something that they know is going to take a little bit more time to work out or uh, really adopt. Um, that should be happening well in advance, I think, of people being able to build those uh, housing developments. So, um, and I also would say that I, it would be great if we could have uh, more time and more input on these things. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Next up, Judy Scott, followed by Marilyn Corrigan, David Overton, and Jeff Carey. Judy, go ahead with your comment. Yes, I'd like to um, 
offer my services to get a hold of North Mason Community Voice. They are still in existence to see if we can have a public forum, and forum if you'd be willing to do that. Um, if you would contact me, have somebody contact me, I'll see if we can make some arrangements to get more boots on the ground information uh, to the communities and the surrounding communities around the UGA. So thank you. Thanks, Judy, appreciate that. Uh, Marilyn Corrigan, go have your comment. Yes, I have two comments. One is just reiterating um, that we need a broader communication than just the UGA people. Um, I think it's all the people that go in and out of Belfair every day, um, Allen, Greater Belfair Union even, um, to know about these things, not just the stakeholders right in, right in town. And then um, I also put, put a shout out to the timing and the coordinated development. I think it's great that we have a plan, um, but things like um, that have been mentioned, like if we need a roundabout at McDonald's, we need to be working on that right now because there'll be people in those, in those apartments in a couple months. So, um, and the corridor not coming for four years is ridiculous. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> Hey, thanks, Marilyn. Uh, David Overton and then Jeff Carey. Hi, good morning, uh, commissioners. We can still say that as it's just a few minutes before noon. Uh, I wanted to rise in support of the commission taking action today. We've participated in a little bit over two years of this process. This, I believe, is my fourth or fifth hearing uh, on it. And many of the same people that are testifying today were participating in those hearings. So to provide uh, the community with some assurances that there's a timeline going forward, uh, I'd encourage you to take action and have thorough deliberation today. Uh, mm -hmm. We submitted uh, a letter regarding some of the public uh, participation that we uh, uh, went through and it's fairly exhaustive. It certainly rises to a higher standard, which I think is appropriate than either state or your own county regs uh, require. So some of those meetings, the scoping hearings, uh, the PAC hearings that uh, revise the agenda, as well as the commission hearings and deliberations, as well as all the briefings that went through the county commission were all informative to the process. Uh, I am uh, uh, very COVID compliant as much as I can be and uh, would not feel comfortable uh, in a public setting. So I encourage the county to still follow its protocols or to change its protocols uh, if it's going to depart from that. <clears throat> uh, I also rise in support of Lisa Klein's comments. Uh, she made some points that uh, I think are very relevant, that urban uh, development requires uh, utility extension. And I think for the sewer extension that you are proposing that having more hookups is a better thing. Uh, and this is one of the properties that would be serving uh, or served by the extension that you're considering. I think her point about wellhead protection is also uh, on point that you don't want septic systems uh, in an environmentally sensitive area. So either Alt uh, 3, uh, which would include that, or the Planning Commission's recommendation of all three hybrid with some modifications, uh, but it looks like all three would be the cleanest adoption. Um, and uh, I applaud the staff on going through this process. It is difficult times, uh, but when they've been asked, they've doubled down and increased public awareness and support uh, for this project. So it feels like a very robust process. I also sat on the 2004 process uh, for the first severe plan and the ones that predated that. Uh, and these mimic prior processes. I know there were some questions about what those looked like, but as, as a member of the, all of those prior processes going back to uh, predating GMA, uh, this has been the most robust. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next up we have Jeff Carey. Jeff, go ahead with your comment. Yes, thank you. You know, it's always amazing how everybody calls the bite when it's your turn to go up. <laughs> it's always amazing. Anyway, I reside between the two urban growth areas, Allen and Belfair. Um, I've been involved since 1997 with various aspects of community planning in the area. And 
it, I got involved as a result of because of the Allen sewer and zoning. So here we are again, 25 years later, same things, deja vu. My concern is uh, I support, you know, the planning, development. I have no hang up with any of the landowners developing their property. My issue is, is that it seems like we, oh, since I've been involved since the beginning, it seems like we do not comprehensively look at the capital facilities requirements and look at really what the impact is on both the existing citizens as well as the new citizens coming to our county. So my, my concern is after all these years, always the capital facilities portion falls short from my viewpoint. I concur with you, uh, Commissioner Shetty, that after two years, this would be the only place where government moves too, is moving too fast at two years. At the same time, you know, I don't want to inadvert inadvertently adopt something that's going to, you know, create problems, you know, for the community as a whole or the landholders, or or other residents in the vicinity. Um, during the last two weeks, since just before the sewer um, presentation, I've reviewed uh, most of your briefings it, that dealt with this. Um, some of the PAC meetings, both the audio and the minutes. Uh, I've watched the 12-6 PAC, or I mean, I listened to the 12-6 PAC meeting uh, on the recommendations. Um, I've discussed this with a couple of the commissioners. I've discussed it with uh, staff. I've even uh, discussed with uh, Mr. Overton, uh, you know, my concerns and what have you, and I understand his concerns. Uh, so when I, when I say things, I'm considering a lot of these these points. But my position is that the EIS and the, the uh, other document, these do documents are not really ready for adoption if we're going to use this as the final guidance uh, of what we do. Uh, case in point, um, you know, I, I sit on the plan, uh, the uh, transportation improvement, or, yeah, TIPCAP. Um, until this last meeting, None of these things were brought forth uh, to TIPCAP. My concern on that is, is that with the transportation side is that you have impact fees and I'm not sure they're the right fees. As an example, uh, the last item on your spreadsheet is dealing with the um, roundabout at the south end of the Belfair bypass. I don't quite understand why that's in as a, as a component of the, of the uh, impact fee. Um, likewise, <clears throat> there are two projects that are in your six year tip that are on that list. That list has more than, I can't remember, at least about a dozen projects at least. <clears throat> There's only two that are on the six year tip and the two that are on the six year tip do not match the numbers are not even close to the numbers in, in your uh, documents that you're reviewing and approving today. <clears throat> Uh, Jeff, do you want to, can you, Pardon me? can you start wrapping up your over the three minutes? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, uh, okay. Well, I guess to sum it up is take water rights. I look at what you got going and I look at what Mason, uh, you know, Belfort Water has going. I think it looks like to me we're exceeding the water rights capability. If we're trying to plan for population, we don't have water rights what's gonna give there. I mean, water rights are getting harder and harder to acquire. Um, another thing on, you know, on, the, on the, one of the projects, there's a missing project on those transportation ones and that's the one at uh, Belfair Street. Uh, you have zoning to the west of it, multifamily on 22 or 23 acres. You know, that's, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean it'll develop that density, but that's, you know, 2,200, I mean, uh, 220 dwellings. That's quite a bit of little traffic, either going out the North Shore Road or the, uh, uh, the uh, Belfair Street. Um, I, I guess, you know, it's always hard to sum these up in three minutes or less, but the other part is I mentioned earlier, like, okay, so where in the plan is the capital facilities for the parks? Um, you know, so I guess what I'm trying to say is this, in summing it up. There's a lot of things we can do. I don't think it should take any longer. What I think is we should have more accurate data and get these decisions laid out 
because it, to me, you can make, you could res easily resolve this in a month, but you need to have these factors in there. Otherwise we're making this, in my opinion, blind. And in the end, we're gonna be SOL. And one last thing, the, these plans are supposed to use FO, FO, uh, FMO or, you know, Office of Financial Management's population numbers, predictions and forecasts. And I, the county needs to consider the fact that Washington State in 2019 grew at 115K. OFM numbers say in 2021, they grew at 59K. U.S. Census estimates they only really grew at 33K. Where am I going with this? I'm concerned that we're that we're overbuilding. It seems like this is how we got into trouble with the other two sewer facilities in the past is that we tried to estimate where we went and we always overshot and we didn't pay more and build more as we go. So I know that's more than three minutes, but uh, I appreciate that concern. And uh, uh, I would like you to take those facts I present to you and uh, use them for consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Any other, uh, any other comments, um, go ahead and raise your hand. Um, or if you're unable to raise your hand, uh, unmute yourself and I'll sure recognize you. Any additional comments? Lisa, I see that your hand is raised. Do you have a, an additional comment or is that still raised from earlier? Oh, no, sorry. Okay, no, not a problem. Uh, seeing no other hands raised, I'll ask one more time. Uh, is there any other public comment? If so, unmute yourself and uh, state your name and sure I'll recognize you. Okay, hearing no additional comment, uh, I will close the public comment portion and move to commissioner deliberation and or motion. Commissioner Nolan. Mr. Chair, uh, first I wanna make clear a, a couple of things. One on the EIS itself, I was uh, I was definitely in favor of the EIS and, and still am. It's just some of the aspects of the EIS that there's questions on. Uh, for history, one of the reasons why we looked for an EIS was not brought up, and that was the idea that supposedly Amazon uh, chose above us because we didn't have an EIS in place, environmental impact. With that being said, you know I can see how it's important to have it so that builders can come in, know what they need to do in order to, to move forward. I don't have an issue with that. I'm not even sure I have an issue with uh, most of the stuff that uh, would be the changes. Uh, the issue I have is more with the idea of how we've gone about this and where we're going with in regards to our public and our community and those that we represent. You know, Mr. Overton made a statement that this was robust like 2004. I was there also, and it's not even close. And the pictures that you will see in the presentation, that's what I was bringing up early, show all the people around tables, not one table. Tables filled the whole bottom of that room at the church for just one of them. And they went over and over and over again. The participation was huge. And this is the biggest change since that participation occurred. The impact here uh, is exponential on the community. Uh, regarding density and population. And to ignore that would be a real, real shame because the impact it's going to have on their lives can be exponential as well. Uh, I agree that we met the letter of the law. That's not at issue here. Whether or not we met the letter of the law for, for uh, being able to pass something is one thing, but we did not meet our responsibility, in my opinion, as representatives of the people to talk with them and to have a uh, meaningful back and forth between them and between staff and them so they could even understand what we're talking about and give us their input. I want us all to remember this is their community too. We can't just ignore the people that live there and what they would like to see for their community. Somebody needs to sit and ask them. And meeting with a 20 people or 25 people, and it wasn't near that many for the uh, stakeholders, uh, you're talking to a few people. You're not or persons. You're not talking to the people. Eventually here, we should have been talking to and we should be talking to the people. It's not too late. There is no drop dead date on this where if we don't do this today, all heck breaks loose. It's a choice that's going to be made here at the commission level, whether just to, in my opinion, shove it through or go back out and allow the people that live there and the people that live around it and drive through it, the 20 plus thousand people that go through it a day to have some type of interaction where they may be able to understand what's happening. 
Now, we had a meeting yesterday uh, where it was decided that this would continue. It was sad to me because uh, it was stated that we would have a meeting, uh, that this would go back out to the people uh, the week before. And things have changed. Now, I thought about trying to make a big public thing over, you know, being Valentine's Day, I think it wasn't appropriate just to, to try and ram people through because they need to be educated to this, not just ran here uh, to show them that they're not being heard or they're not being paid attention to. We had a lot of emails during the last public hearing that spoke about the traffic and the impacts and what uh, impacts that growth will have up there. We've had emails on this one as well. Uh, we have open meetings that are happening all over the place now, where we're also sending staff. I, I attended two meetings in the last two weeks in the public in North Mason, where 70 people attended these meetings. Uh, they were open to the public. It was very informative, and things were working back and forth, and there was information going back and forth, and there was county staff there at both of them. With that being said, you know, to say that that's an issue now doesn't even make sense. There's different ways of doing things. It doesn't have to be like a town hall that we just had. It could be an open house where you have three, four trestle boards and the community gets to come in and ask staff about the questions on them so they can get up-to-date information on what these things mean. What did number one look like? What did number two look like? What does number three, and what does number three alternative uh, hybrid look like? Without that, Again, we're going blind. Uh, Jeff Carey made some incredible points when it comes to uh, the transportation and getting the numbers right. That's been my issue I've had with some of the stuff we've been doing all the way through. We're not doing all the work that's necessary to get where we need to go. Uh, once again, the impact on citizens just can't be overlooked and be considered to be nothing. And I appreciated the comment that, the, that uh, when we had our when the they had a the open time for a comment that they received 14 comments on such a big giant issue as we're about to be voting on i get 14 comments when i get uh, go for a, a gallon of milk at the store it is literally it may be great and it may meet the letter of the law but it does not meet the letter of our responsibility and with that, it may not go anywhere, but I'm gonna move, the, Mr. Chair, that we table this for 60 days to allow the public an open house. And in 30, uh, you know, in 30 days to allow for that open house and then come back 30 days later after we've taken in their information and send everything back to the tip cap and, and such so we could have a good open discussion with all the people that are interested in this and all the people that will be impacted on it. So again, that's my motion is to table it for 60 days to allow for and, and create a public open house and uh, take it back to our committees to give them their, their input as well. Take in the information and come back at the 60 day mark to actually vote on this with a uh, full uh, understanding that the public's been involved. Okay, there's a motion on the table to, uh, there's a motion to table this for 60 days. Uh, is there a second? Uh, hearing no second, the motion uh, is uh, dies for lack of a second. Uh, is there additional commissioner deliberation? Yeah, I just want to make a few comments. Um, I have so many that I'd like to make, but I'm going to reserve that for another time. Um, When we're talking about the transportation, um, and I am so thankful that, that Andy is here with us also, but also um, Andy made comments um, back in June, and a lot of it, some of them were on the, the freight corridor. And one thing that intrigued me was he said, the freight corridor is anticipated to be T3 carrying 300 to 4 million tons of freight annually. That's a lot of traffic that will be diverted from um, the, the three to the corridor or commonly known as the bypass also. That will help with traffic. Am I saying that that's gonna solve it? No, no. Adding three additional lanes in Tacoma, did, that didn't solve that traffic issue either. So I think that there's, there's gonna be a lot of growing pains my concern and 
the reason that I really want to move forward with this EIS is so that we can help to um, decrease or to show where urban sprawl, we don't have urban sprawl, where this is where we want the growth. This is where it makes the most sense. It's gone through um, this, the, the processes, the steps, and um, as far as it being a COVID year, and believe me, this is, I've lost some good friends because of this, because of COVID. And do I want to put more people in a situation that we don't need to? I don't. Do I think that COVID has stopped people from um, participating? I don't I don't think that it that it has because COVID has given us the opportunity to do many of our our meetings virtually, which gives them well, with briefings they weren't televised they were just black and white um, letters on the paper, but now we can have people watching and it's recorded and people if they don't have time to watch right now. They can watch for four and a half hours tonight, uh, grab a bowl of popcorn and a glass of wine. But I, I think it's given us the opportunity to be more transparent. Um, <clears throat> past two months have been uh, kind of interesting for me. I have been attacked. I've been accused um, of doing things that I've not done. I've, there's, there's been a lot going on and um, many meetings that were considered private were not private. And I found out about those meetings and about the accusations during those meetings. Disappointed? Yes, absolutely I am. Um, does it affect my judgment? No, it absolutely does not. I am, I've always been um, supportive of Mason County, keeping Mason County rural. Um, there's a lot of bills that go through the legislature. I testify on them, I send comment because I want to protect Mason County. I want to protect Belfair, um, Shelton, Union, uh, Matlock. I love Mason County and I love the people that live here. So I would, moving forward, I'll, I'll stop and get off, I'll get off my soapbox. But what I would like to do is I know that there are three um, different motions that we need to make to make this EIS um, a law, um, a uh, a path forward. Let's let's go with that. And so, what I what, what I would like to do is talk to bigger brains than mine, so that we can make sure that the motions. If I make a motion and I agree with what they're um, re suggesting, I would like to make those so that they fit the different areas that we need to hit. So, Kel, with that, um, I would like to ask you to help me with. Um, some motions to move forward. Sure. Yeah. And Lisa or uh, Kevin, if you could pull up that the last slide. Sorry about the traffic behind me. Um, the last slide in the presentation has the um, the different items that would be voted on. And we could start with that. Um, there's still some things that need to be considered if you're looking to um, make a motion to move forward and adopt these things. And that is um, one, there was the zoning request from R4 to R5. So that would be um, whether you looking at adopting the alternative three or the alternative three hybrid with the zone change or just one of the alternatives without the zone change. And then the other is about the mitigation fees for, for traffic. 
I would like to, I, the motion that I would like to make is, is to um, accept the, the hybrid with the zoning changes. Um, so the R4 to the R5 on the River Hill property. Okay. So is that a is that a motion that's on the table, or are you still, uh, Commissioner Trask, asking for staff input? Yeah, no. If, if that motion works, I'll I'll stick with that. So you're moving to adopt uh, proposed planned action ordinance uh, with alternative with the alternative three hybrid with the zoning amendments from R4 to R5 at River Hill? Yes. Okay. Uh, so that's the motion. Uh, is there a second? Uh, I will second that motion. Uh, any discussion? Mr. Chair, just uh, uh, again, just the idea that this is going through without uh, more actual public input. I will be uh, standing against it. Okay. Um, I didn't have a chance to really weigh in on any of the deliberation, um, but I will uh, um, just say that I'm very appreciative to staff for working on this uh, internally. I know that this is, um, it's been a big lift for staff and I'm also really appreciative to our folks, uh, our consultants at, at Burke. Um, and, you know, I, I look at this as a, an opportunity for Belfair to uh, grow in a more sustainable way, to grow in a way that uh, helps um, growth in a, in a managed way. Um, one of the things that we've heard throughout this process has been um, that there are definitely gaps in, um, you know, tra uh, transportation infrastructure and that there are needs uh, that need to be addressed in terms of uh, traffic flow and patterns and, and we need to build out that infrastructure and one of the reasons that I am supportive of this and, and that we'll get into it when we set the um, when we set the traffic impact fee is that we'll have an opportunity to uh, you know have development pay for development uh, in that regard that we'll be able to have uh, a clearer path for uh, developers to contribute to uh, traffic mitigation and I think that's a pretty significant step forward for Mason County, but in particular the Belfair UGA. Um, this is uh, something that I mentioned in our briefings yesterday that I've really had to rethink and change my position on uh, based on public comment, uh, as well as the, the documentation that was put together as part of the planned action EIS. Um, and so I, um, uh, I think that this is a, a prudent decision for the urban growth area. I think it's a prudent decision for Mason County um, and so I, I do support adopting the alternate three hybrid with the zoning recommendations that were uh, made by staff um, for the River Hill area. Uh, any other discussion on that motion? Okay, hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. And the motion passes. And so there needs to be uh, two more motions, correct? Now we need yeah. to. Yeah. I'll go ahead. Kat. So I think then to go into, so with that, um, the zone change in the L3 hybrid, it does bring, you know, that, that allows an additional 15 dwellings, uh, and 15 more, um, transportation trips which you know would be captured by the mitigation fees that actually brings the overall transportation cost per trip down to 4893 from 4915 um, so perhaps now is the time for you guys to discuss the um, i understand from from a couple of different commissioners that uh, you're not interested in charging the full cost per trip but perhaps a percentage so is there any discussion on a traffic impact fee or mitigation fee uh, or motion? Mr. Chair, I'm, uh, I, again, I'm going to have the same argument and won't be uh, uh, voting in the positive, but if you do uh, approach a fee, I hope you will also consider putting it at the end uh, when uh, going for, uh, when finishing the permit and going into occupancy. 
to be able to allow for developers to pay for it, uh, not up front, but at the end uh, and be able to recoup their fees to allow them to be able to work within our system better. Thanks, Commissioner. Uh, well taken. Um, Commissioner Trask, any, any other comments or a motion? I would not say that I don't feel comfortable going with the 4893. Um, I would say if we're going to do a fee, looking at, could you bring up, um, Kevin, if you could bring up that other chart showing the fees and what, um, there we go, thank you. So Bremerton PSIC, they did 20%. So if we did 20% of the 48.93, where would that bring us? Was that 20, per, were they doing 20% of the cost of construction? My understanding is they did 20% of the, the cost of system improvements that were due to new development. And so that would be the 48.93, is that correct? I, I believe so. Um, it's also a fee that hasn't been changed in about 10 years. That has been or hasn't been? Has not been changed. So I, I guess I would, you know, my my comfort level um, is uh, the 20% of the 4983 is an odd number at like 980 bucks, $978. Um, I think an even thousand with a escalator uh, of five percent annually um, would be prudent uh, to keep us competitive with our neighbor directly to the north of the county line um, and I do agree with Commissioner Netherlands uh, comments about um, having that fee paid upon occupancy if uh, that was accurate Commissioner Netherland am I capturing that the right way yes On, uh, it's not actually on occupancy, but on the uh, issuance. Okay. Yes. Okay. I issuance of occupancy or permit where they where they're allowed to occupy. So this way they pay for it on sale, basically, if you're selling a piece of property. Gotcha. That makes sense. Uh, Commissioner Trask, is that a is that amenable? It is. Yeah. Okay. Um, perhaps a little bit out of order, but uh, I would I will move uh, that we adopt a traffic transportation mitigation fee of one thousand dollars with a five percent annual escalation uh, payable upon uh, issuance of an occupancy permit. I'll second. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to uh, implement a $1,000 transportation mitigation fee with a 5% escalator annually, uh, payable upon issuance of occupancy permit. Uh, any discussion? I still think uh, that people should have a say, but I will actually be voting in favor of it. Okay, Commissioner Trask, any comment? No, I, I, I think it's great that all three of us are having a conversation and agreeing, so. Uh, with that said, I'll call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. Okay. Uh, and then so then we go back to um, the remaining uh, ordinance adoptions or amendments, rather. Oh, uh, if Who's I might, it? there's um, Commissioner Schutte. Yes. There's one other blank to fill in the planned action. Okay. Um, which is about the period of expenditure. Um, under SEPA, you can spend the funds you collect under any amount of time. Um, we uh, wrote in a paragraph that uh, would have the county voluntarily try to spend the funds within either 10, 15, or 20 years um, as a way just to, to uh, spend within a a reasonable amount of time and, and track it. Um, 
it's up to you whether you want to put a period of expenditure or not. Um, it, it, SEPA does not limit that, but we put that in there as a transparency measure. Um, so 20 years would match the life of the plan. You could also pick 10 years, which is similar to an impact fee or something in between. Okay. Um, Kel, do you have a recommendation? Uh, I do not. I would ask Loretta if she has a preference. Bear with me. Sorry, it took a while to unmute there, commissioners. Um, I think the, <laughs> the longer period of time might allow us some flexibility to make sure that we round up the funding necessary for these projects. We're um, collecting 20% of what we anticipate to be needed for the projects. And um, yeah, I would, I would recommend the longer time frame. We can certainly include in our six-year tip and in our transportation long-range capital improvement program, those projects so that they're identified and clearly tracked. And we would be tracking them also um, along with the annual budget if we create and establish a new fund for, the, um, for these impact fees. Okay, so just to be clear, Loretta, you're recommending the 20 year period? I am, commissioners. Okay. We could certainly work with something less, but I believe the 20 year will provide more flexibility. Okay. Uh, commissioners, any, any comments or observations on that? It'll be just an exercise, whatever you're doing, because at, uh, at that rate, you're gonna need a thousand to get to a million. in order to actually build a project. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Trask? Yeah, no, I, I, I would follow staff's recommendation and go with the 20 years. So I, you know, I, guess, I guess my concern with that is probably similar to Commissioner Netherlands is that 20 years is a, is a long planning horizon, um, especially when we know we need to have mitigation um, in, the, in the more near term. Um, you know, I, I don't know, 10 years is, I mean, 10 years is almost like the blink of an eye anymore, but um, I, I almost, I like that aspect of being able to use it as an impact fee in that sense, where we're able to, um, you know, really go after projects, um, but would be willing to maybe split the difference at 15 years um, is also outlined by uh, the documents. So can you just add, Loretta or Kel or, or Lisa, can you answer a question for me? So if we if we have projects and we can go out and we can get grants for these project, projects and we need a match, would this be the, um, would this be used for that match? Or maybe Mark or Jennifer? It, it could be used for match, Commissioner, yes. Okay. And it could also be used, we could certainly spend the, the, the funds sooner than the 10 years or 15 on pre-design and intersection improvement analysis in conjunction with DOT. Well, I would be comfortable making a motion to go with the 10, uh, the 10 year. But that there... probably, probably needs some <laughs> extra words in there, but. So the, um, so we determine the fee and then the period of expenditure, Commissioner Trask, your motion is to make the period of expenditure 10 years? Yes. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to uh, set the period of expenditure for the traffic mitigation fees uh, for a period of 10 years. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. Okay, next item. 
This would be uh, amending the welfare sub area plan and comprehensive plan, correct? Correct. Okay. And Commissioner Schutte, that would be um, amended by the zoning as you amended for the planned action. Okay, so a motion to amend the welfare sub area plan and comprehensive plan uh, per the zoning identified in uh, alternative three hybrids with the recommendations from staff. I'll second. Okay. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to amend the welfare sub area plan and comprehensive plan uh, with the associated zoning changes in alternative threes hybrid, as well as the recommendations of staff uh, regarding the River Hill area. Uh, any additional discussion? Yeah, Mr. Chair, no uh, undertaking uh, as great as this should be taken lightly and should not be done without further discussions with the community uh, to really truly gain their input. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, any additional discussion? I would like to just quickly um, thank Lisa Klein for bringing this forward and bringing it to our attention, as well as staff bringing it forward. Okay, thank you. Uh, if there's no other discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in, face, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. And the motion carries. Uh, and then our final uh, item is amending Title 17 in the zoning map, which is attachment B. And uh, Lisa, is this also, um, we also need to call out the zoning changes that were adopted initially with the alternative three hybrid? Correct, Commissioner, and, and I would say the little adjustments for the 15 dwelling units were, are going to get carried through all of the documents wherever a number is provided that relates to the 15 units. We will be cleaning that up as well. Okay. Uh, is there a motion on this item? So moved. <laughs> okay. Uh, is there a second? I uh, will second uh, the motion. It's been moved and seconded to amend Title 17 in the zoning map uh, consistent with the alternative three hybrid uh, and recommendations of staff. Uh, is there any additional discussion? It's the same uh, for the record as my earlier discussions that anything so great as this should be given an opportunity to go directly to the people and let them have a conversation of it, uh, especially up in the North Mesa area. Uh, so with that, I'll be standing against. Thank you. Any additional discussion? At the very end, I would like to stay, say, say something, but um, I think we're at the very end. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, we're at the very end of we're at the very end of this. We still have more meeting to go through, but we do. We do. Well, then I I, I would like to take the opportunity and to thank everybody that that contributed, including the schools, emergency resources. Um, responders, um, Burke consulting for their many hours, staff for their many hours, and probably a few more gray hairs, and everybody that has participated now and that I'm hoping will, will watch us in the future and make sure that they're aware of, of things that are in motion. Um, I think it's important that we have community input. That's never been something that I was ever against. And so I look forward to moving forward with um, this and with more projects. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just echo the thanks to our staff. Um, I think they've done a tremendous job trying to navigate a complex uh, set of planning uh, items, um, as well as our, our consultants at Burke, uh, who are, in my opinion, second to none in the state when it comes to doing planned action, environmental impact statements. And um, I think the I think the issues that were raised um, throughout the process, uh, I think they did a good job at trying to incorporate those into uh, the documents that were ultimately adopted today. Um, when we received public comment um, about items in the plan, um, we were responsive to those. And, and I think today's adoption of those uh, amendments to the code uh, show that we're willing to listen and take feedback that is uh, presented um, and when the, where the plan can be improved. 
Um, it was it was an interesting process uh, given some of the other outside challenges, but um, I think today you heard some mixed votes from the commission who, uh, you know, we, we do understand the need to be able to um, manage the growth in particular in, in the Belfair urban growth area. Um, and this is a step in that direction. Uh, and certainly, you know, I, I've, I've said this a number of times when we've taken, uh, when we take an action on other elements of uh, planning and land use uh, throughout the county, but also in Belfair. And, you know, the matter, the fact of the matter is, um, if we're not going to have growth within the, the urban growth areas in our county, uh, where does that growth go? Because I do think in many cases, growth is inevitable. And um, we've tried to be responsive when uh, there have been uh, issues raised. Uh, Commissioner Netherland um, wanted more input and wanted to do the flyer, and we did the flyer. Um, and we tried to get people involved through that way, uh, as well as, as other venues, whether it be our Citizen Planning Advisory Commission, who worked really, really hard on this. And for folks that don't know, um, that planning commission is made up of, of your neighbors, folks from across the county who give up their uh, their evenings and, and I'm sure some weekends uh, preparing for meetings in order to uh, come into those planning commission meetings and uh, and and make decisions on on what to advise the county commission to do. Um, and throughout the process, they were taking comment and they were making adjustments and asking questions, and then ultimately landed on uh, the alternative three hybrid. Uh, and today, you heard us uh, accept their recommendation. Our our resident planners uh, recommendation on alternative threes hybrid uh, with some adjustments based on public comment that we received. Um, and so uh, we want to continue to try to be responsive when people make uh, material uh, comments on, on the work that we're trying to do on, on the people's behalf. And so I um, appreciate all of the effort that went into this. And I know that, I know that there were some frustrations about um, you know, doing an open house or not doing an open house. Um, and I know Commissioner Netherland mentioned today that he's had, he gets 14 comments when he goes into the grocery store and I don't doubt it. I think, uh, you know, we both, um, Commissioner Trask and I are caught in similar situations and, and really enjoy that part of this job. Um, you know, and certainly in some of those conversations, this planned action EIS over the past two years, uh, I'm sure maybe came up even. And I know Commissioner Nelling was probably encouraging those folks to get involved in the process. Um, and so the best thing that we can do is we can be, uh, you know, continue to communicate with our neighbors in this community and, and continue to send out reminders and put information out there for folks to participate. Um, and so I, I think uh, while, uh, you know, it's not a perfect plan, uh, it, is a, uh, it is a good plan. It is a strong plan um, that starts to address the environmental concerns of growth and development in the Belfair urban growth area uh, that adjusts zoning where, uh, where growth is likely to occur, uh, putting it in an area that is, uh, you know, respectful of our uh, environmental, uh, you know, critical areas, um, but also in a way that allows the county to start capturing uh, transportation mitigation fees, that we're uh, putting more of that responsibility back onto the developers who want to come into this community. Um, we know we need transportation improvements. We know that we need housing. We know that we want more jobs and opportunity here um, so that we have people that are, uh, you know, stabilizing utility rates, that it's stabilizing not only our welfare sewer rates, but stabilizing your PUD power rates, stabilizing your Belfair water rates. Um, you know, and that they're contributing to public safety and education and fire protection and emergency medical services, um, you know, to continue to provide uh, high quality services for the residents of Belfair and, and Mason County more broadly. So um, I was happy to see that we were able to get uh, some support on some of the issues from all three of us, others not. And I understand that these, these processes can be like that sometimes, but Certainly grateful for uh, everybody's work over the past two years, including commissioners Netherland and Trask, uh, as well as the folks who showed up today. So um, if uh, there's no other discussion, uh, I will call. Yeah, Commissioner Netherland, go for it. Yeah, just one more second. Uh, just to say thank you for all the work, even though I disagree with how the uh, uh, outcome uh, and the inability, in my opinion, to reach out to the community. Uh, one of the reasons why I didn't post anything last night is there was a post that came up regarding one of our employees, Kel Rowan, who I think actually does an incredible job, and I wanted to make that real clear. Uh, I didn't think it was appropriate to, to go after 
uh, her on a personal level, uh, the work that she's put in, even though, like I said, I disagree with how we've gone out to the public, but not with her work. And I don't want there to be any confusion with that. So Kel Rowan, thank you for all your hard work. And thank you to uh, all the others that put in work on this as well. Thank, thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, okay, any other uh, discussion? Okay, hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. And with that, the motion carries. Uh, Kel, we've reached the end of our items for item 10.3, correct? That is correct. And I know that Lisa and Kevin have some work to do just to wrap up that, that plan action ordinance, given the, um, the uh, votes that you've taken. And so we will be bringing that ordinance back. So I'll work with Mackenzie to make sure that she has all the correct copies for uh, your signatures. Okay. Excellent. Very good. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate your time today. Thank you very much, commissioners. We appreciated working with staff and with you. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, uh, moving on to item number 11, our board calendar and reports. Uh, Commissioner Netherland, uh, Commissioner Trask, and then I'll pick up. Sure. Okay, so uh, in the last week or so, we had the uh, area command meetings, Peninsula Regional Transportation Organization. We actually had a town forum up in North Mason uh, in Allen regarding transportation. Wonderful forum. Uh, great to get out there amongst everybody and the, the state uh, showed up there. Uh, Dennis Engel did and so did some of our staff and want to say thank you for them coming out there. I met with the the uh, executive director of the ARC. I met, uh, we had a board meeting of Olympic Regional Clean Air Authority, uh, meeting of the audit committee and another forum uh, the week later for criminal justice and safety issues regarding the North Mason area. Again, very well attended, about 70 people attended that as well. Uh, thank you to Chief Sperling and to uh, Tim Whitehead and Mike Dorsey, who also came up to North Mason to speak with the people. And I think they did a great job and they represent the county very, very well. This next coming week after this meeting today, we have Mason Transit Authority meeting, North Mason Chamber uh, Retreat, Mason County Housing Authority meeting, meeting of the Cemetery Board, Peninsula Regional Transportation Organization Executive Board meeting, Area Command, uh, North Mason Community Voice is also having uh, apparently a forum on criminal uh, issues and crime issues up in the North Mason area and a meeting of the Lawn uh, Enforcement and Firefighters Board. And that brings us back and we start all over again. Thanks, Commissioner. Commissioner Trask? Thank you. So, um, yeah, I think we've all been pretty darn busy the last few weeks. Um, this afternoon, I have a Mason Transit Board meeting, um, Nutrition and Meals Program meeting, a Turning Point Board meeting, a uh, meeting with a bunch of Amazing Women, um, EOC meetings, a chamber meeting, it's the state of the county, uh, WASAC LSC meeting, Public Works Board Executive Committee meeting, and then uh, we meet at, at the county level regarding legislative or legislative uh, priorities and we discuss bills. President's Day is on the 21st. So have a great President's Day. Um, uh, Community Action Council, I have a Pack Mountain board retreat in Aberdeen, along with the EOC meeting, WASAC Public Works Board Executive Committee meeting, another legislative meeting. Um, and then we are back here for Monday for EOC briefings and WASAC virtual assembly. Great. Thanks, Commissioners. A uh, few things going forward this week. Uh, after this meeting, uh, I'm going to hop on the South Sound YMCA's advisory board meeting. Uh, also have a meeting with uh, representatives from the Arc of the Peninsulas, uh, as well as our Mason Transit meeting. Uh, have Hood Canal Coordinating Council uh, this week, uh, as well as Canvassing Board and the Thurston Mason uh, BH ASO Governance Board meeting. Uh, also have a meeting with our county representative on the Tiverlin Regional Library Board, uh, as well as the follow-up meeting to the canvassing board, which is a uh, certification of the February uh, election. Uh, following week, have the uh, EDC Legislative Committee meeting, uh, and then I'm out uh, in the field with Public Works, uh, looking at some road projects and opportunities. 
Um, and then also have the uh, sheriff's breakfast um, at the end of the month, followed by uh, Monday briefings, uh, and then my regular check-in with uh, staff at the BHASO, and then back for our March 1st uh, commissioner meeting, and then our evening uh, public meeting with uh, welfare sewer. Uh, commissioners, having gone through our agenda, are there any other items? Just to comment, it looked like we had a, a squirrel or something come into our frame under the <laughs> and so on, uh, thing. But with that, uh, Mr. Chair, I'll move that we adjourn. I'll second. And moved and seconded that we adjourn. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. And the motion carries. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks. You too.